Hey folks, Dan Furrier here with your market update for May 13th, 2024. So last week we had no data. This week, we have data that revolves all around what the Federal Reserve's monitoring. What's the Federal Reserve doing? Well, they're monitoring inflation and the jobs numbers to figure out, is the rates that they have high enough to cure inflation right now? Are they in restrictive territory or are they in neutral or do they need to raise rates even higher? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So without further ado, let's get over to it. The economic calendar we have for this week is revolves around inflation and jobs. Why do I say that? Let's well, right over there. We have PPI. On Tuesday, we have CPI on Wednesday, and we have jobs reports on Thursday. Now, what the heck is CPI, PPI, and all this other stuff? Well, I'll make it simple for you. PPI, when you think of that, you think of producers. PPIs, producer price inflation. Okay, think of it that way. Consumer on the C side is consumer price inflation. So PPI is the producer inflation, CPI is consumer inflation. And then we got jobs numbers. Why is this so important? Well, the Federal Reserve, that's what they monitor. They're trying to figure out, are our rates high enough to cure inflation? Do we need to increase them higher? And that's what we're gonna go over at the end of this video. So without further ado, let's get looking into the numbers so I can give you a kind of at least the tea leave readings on where these numbers might be coming in at. So the first thing we wanna go over to here is right through here. Last CPI report, these are where the numbers came in at. Overall report was 3.5% up. Those numbers consisted of insurance, auto insurance being up 22% in just one month reading. It's nuts. And then you have shelter prices up 5.7, food up 2.2, and gasoline up 1.3. The gasoline part was the one that was, was throwing me a little bit in the last reading because we were looking at oil prices teetering almost 90 to $95 a barrel. If you're a little confused, let's take a deep dive into, into all these numbers. The first thing we wanna look at is the part of the inflation numbers that the Federal Reserve most watches is shelter. Why? Because it makes up 40%. Shelter makes up 40% of the consumer inflation numbers. Okay, so here's where the shelter numbers were. All right, so if you look back through time, basically housing or shelter prices was always pretty much stable under 5%. And then you saw right through here when everything just went bonkers in 2020, 2021, the, the shelter prices went all the way up to almost 9%. Okay, where are they now? They basically keep teetering down. Every basically month they're dropping about a half or 1%. Okay, so that's where we are. So that is a, a basically a nose drop or a nosebleed drop right through here on house or shelter prices. And that's going to play a role in that number right there. The next thing is I focus in on is oil. Okay. Cause oil is the life of our, our, our economy, if you like it or not. Okay. So if we look back in time, back in 2022, oil prices were about $120 a barrel. That's when, when gas prices were about six, seven bucks a, a gallon. Remember those days? And then they came way down. Then they went way up. Then they came way down just recently in just April. You can see that April 8th, 2024. Oil prices were supposed to rally all the way up to 95, maybe a hundred dollars a barrel. And that scared the bejesus out of me at that point, but they've been on a kind of a constant nosedive since then. So we have oil prices coming way down. We have a dramatic drop in the shelter prices. Okay. So now let's look at one other component. Now I used to watch this all the time is the cash freight index. Why? Well, because part of the cost of what we pay for something and part of the cost for producers, we have to ship things from where they are to where we need them. Okay, that's what this is. This is shipments all over the world. You see when the, the look how there was a steady flow right through here throughout the years. Okay, this is the cost of shipping things. What happened during COVID or right after COVID when we had shipping supply issues, the prices just jacked up to the moon. Look at where they went. They went from usually about 2% to two and a, two and a quarter percent up to about 4%. That's a huge, especially when you're talking millions and billions and trillions of dollars of freight shipping all out around the country. We've seen a peak on that and it's starting to dramatically drop as well. So we have the freight cost for getting stuff to us down. We have crude prices down. We have um, shelter costs down. So these numbers should start floating over to the CPI and the PPI. I hope you understand that part of it. Now, what I want to show you also is how people reflect or how do a lot of economists, how even do people in, on the Federal Reserve Board figure out does the rate that we're charging right now, and this is the Federal Reserve, does the Federal Reserve's rate that they charge right now, and they control the federal funds rate, is it high enough, okay? Or is it neutral or is it restrictive? So let me explain this. What I do, a lot of economists do, and a lot of people that fit on, sit on the Fed, how they figure this out is they take this number here, 
the federal funds rate, which right now is 5.33. Okay, so we would take that down, 5.33, and we subtract out what the in inflation rate is. Right now, they're saying it's at 3.5%, the overall inflation on the CPI. So 3.5%. So we take this number right through here, federal funds rate, 5.33, subtract out 3.5. Let me get my nifty calculator out because I want to make sure I'm accurate because everybody quotes me to the nth degree on this channel. So we got 5.33 minus 3.5. We have a net positive of 1.83. Okay, so what that's telling us is the Federal Reserve could actually drop rates by 1.83%. Okay, that's how, I, how we figure this. If this number was zero, that means they were net neutral. So they're at a neutral point. They could just sit still. If it was a positive number, like where we were last year, the year before, when the federal funds rate was, let's say about a couple of years ago, the federal funds rate was basically like 0.5 and then inflation was nine. Okay. So you take nine minus 0.5, you still have a positive 8.5. That means the federal reserve needed to raise rates exponentially to catch up. So that's what we're seeing right now. So my concern now is the federal reserve is at a positive 1.8. That means that they're in restrictive territory. So they don't need to increase rates. Actually, they can start turning and reducing rates. And as we're starting to see a lot of company earnings come in with earnings not hitting targets, uh, they might be in the restrictive area right now where they might be at the, the ability to start cutting rates uh, at the next few meetings. So I'll leave that up to the Fed officials and the economy. And the, as the data progresses, we'll monitor this as well. So that's my report for today. So what am I? You guys are out there. Dan, love your reports. Love this, love that. But what do you do? I'm a mortgage loan officer believe it or not. And you get, and then a lot of people might say, oh, Dan, you're FOMO on homes. No, I, I don't care if you buy a house, but if you're looking to buy a house, I would love to help because the most concern people have is, especially when they're buying their first house, Dan, how do I do this? How do I find a lender? How do I find a, a realtor? How do I find this? What is that? What is it? We can give you basically white glove service from the date you put in your application all the way through closing. That's what the commitment I want from you guys. I would love to work with you, but you know, I want to work with those one-on-one -on -one that we can actually assist you through this whole process. Okay. How do you get started with us? Well, there's an apply now link right up there. What we do is you click that, you put in your information, then we set up a consultation call with you. We want to learn about you. We want to know you. We want you guys to know who we are so we can work together, put a plan together and work through with you from the today, the day of the application, all the way to the day you got keys in your hands. We also have one benefit up here on the chart that you might not have seen in the past. It says grant up there. What is it? Well, we actually created this program right through here. You go to it. It'll actually help you follow through a little questionnaire and help you find out, do you qualify for the, some grants out there? We have three in particular on this program, uh, three grants up to $7,500 that are completely forgivable, meaning you don't need to pay them back. Okay, so there's those grants out there, and these are all the tools that we have here to help you out and navigate this market. So we would love to work with you if you're looking to buy your first house, maybe your first investment property, maybe you refinance, or you, I'm sorry, you bought your house and the rate was 8%. Now you see rates down in the sevens, and it's like, hey, can I refinance and save some money? Love to talk to you about that as well. So that's it for today, guys. Just want you to understand where the numbers are coming out this week and why there might be some huge volatility when it comes to mortgage rates this week. Thanks for watching, guys. God bless. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do that right over there. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a fantastic day.